Welcome to Parenting Successful Teens, the podcast that cuts through the overwhelm and stress of this phase and offers parents simple, practical, cognitive, science-based strategies for keeping their teens on track. Join master coach and real-life mom, Allie Irwin, to talk about real teens, real problems, and the skills it takes to raise successful adults. I wrote a Facebook post this week about how relieved I was when my children had both graduated high school because I had come to believe that schools weren't a safe place. And this led to a really interesting discussion on teacher safety. I have both friends and clients who work in the school system, and they have explained to me exactly what it feels like to have a job where you where you are expected to sacrifice your life. You're expected to put yourself in between a gunman and the children in your class. And it's pretty overwhelming when you think about it, like especially a friend and a client both work in the elementary school system. And so like one minute you're making construction paper Father's Day cards and the next minute you're supposed to be like a Navy SEAL or an Army Ranger and protect your students. And how that's just a lot. That expectation is a lot. That was all like really meaningful. But then the conversation took a turn And the person I was having the discussion with turned on the parents, how the parents are the real problem in our school systems. That's where she lost me. Because you have to understand that both the parents and the teachers are operating under the same set of laws. And pitting parents and teachers against each other, it's distracting us from using our power to make actual changes in the system. Like we're not at war with each other. We're actually on the same side, wanting the best for our kids. Like everyone's got a point. Teachers should not be buying their own school supplies, right? Like that's crazy. We should not have school systems underfunded to the point where teachers have to use their salary to buy their own supplies. Like we don't ask <laughs> the engineers at General Dynamics to be buying their own pens, you know, maybe if they want some special pen, but we're not asking them, you know, to buy their own chair to work at General Dynamics. And we, we shouldn't be asking teachers to use their own supplies to do their job. But at the same time, Parents are operating in that system too, and parents should be able to get their kids mental health support when they need it. Uh, One of my teacher friends talked about how many parents come in and know that their child is struggling with a mental health issue, but they literally can't find care for their kids. Teachers should be able to give the grades that they feel fairly reflect the students work. Like that should be, you know, an accepted part of their job. And parents shouldn't have to be so freaked out about what it means if their kid gets a B. You know, that that B or that C or that grade that they're struggling with that they go in to talk to the teacher about. The reason the parents are so freaked out is because they're projecting straight from that C on a chemistry test all the way to them not being able to get a good job. You know, that C means they're not going to get into the right college, which means that then their job prospects are going to be less. And then with those less in job prospect, they're not going to be able to live the kind of independent, good quality life that the parents are dreaming of for their kids. And so you can see where both teachers and parents are laboring under a system where kids are struggling and the adults that love them are struggling. The struggle is real. But the dichotomy between parents and teachers isn't real. Like they are both on the same side. Both of those groups want what's best for kids. Both sides feel powerless against a system right now that's pretty stacked against them. And The culture that we're in is asking individuals, asking individual teachers and individual parents 
to solve these big cultural problems like school safety and income inequality and mental health issues and crumbling infrastructure. They're asking teachers and parents to solve these big societal problems on an individual level. And here's the part that's today's, the point of today's podcast. Big, powerful, cultural forces and institutions are getting away with it because they divide us so that we can't see how much power we have. Okay, there's a great part of Trevor Noah's book. If you haven't read Born a Crime, absolutely go get it. It's phenomenal and hilarious and heartbreaking. And it's about his um, growing up in apartheid Africa. And there's this great part in there where he talks about the brilliance of the apartheid system, which he describes as exploiting the minor differences among groups to keep them focused on one another and not on the government and the apartheid system. It separates, he goes on to say, it separates blacks and Indians and coloreds into separate territories to ensure that groups like the Zulu and the Hosa remain at one another's throats. And when I read that, I thought the mommy wars is really the same thing. It's like in contemporary, it used to be stay-at-home moms versus working moms. Like that's maybe the 80s version of the mommy wars, 90s version. But now it's it's more sophisticated than that because moms get separated into like competing factions based on their parenting philosophy and lifestyle choices and sexual orientation and religion and political affiliation. Like there's really almost no way that they're not dividing different groups of parents, different groups of mothers into almost competing factions. And they're telling us like that faction over there, that other, that, that is the reason that your child is not getting what they need. And for, for the moms, you know, for we moms who are experiencing this, it feels visceral. Like it's, it, by visceral, I mean, we can feel it in our bodies. It's not just an intellectual concept. We feel fear. We feel under threat. It feels high stakes. Because you're not just defending your choices, but it feels like you're actually defending your family. And we are biologically wired to do all kinds of things to protect our family, to lift a car off our kids or step in front of a bullet. I mean, that's that's just biologically wired into us so that the species continues on. So, of course, we're going to defend our kids from a verbal bullet of judgment or what feels like a bullet of resources being taken away from them. So when someone says something to us, like, oh, I would never let my kid get a tattoo, or no kid of mine would ever talk to me like that, or like, Johnny knows better than to come home with a B in chemistry when I know he can get an A, right? All of those, those things, they feel, they feel like a verbal grenade is being launched at your family. They f- it feels visceral to us. We feel judged and attacked. And so we judge and attack. And all of the ways that we're being carved up and taught to judge and attack each other is really just a distraction because we're all on the same side. So today I want to offer a radical idea, a radical solution to this division. It's to embrace a mom positive, like I want to create a mom positive society. So I guess it would be embracing like a mom positive, uh, what would it be? Not theology, mom positive, I don't know, whatever body positivity is, I want that for moms too. Just like we accept all different kinds of bodies. As a society, hopefully we're working towards accepting all different kinds of bodies. I want to accept all all different kinds of moms. I want moms, being a mom, to feel like joining this super special club 
where we defend each other and focus on what we have in common rather than the relatively minor differences in parenting philosophies. Okay, I know that they seem in some cases really big, but honestly, when you go down to the core, they're not that big of difference in comparison to what we have in common. So I'm not asking you to pretend that the differences aren't there. I'm just saying, let those differences pale in relative importance to the things that we have in common. Like, we all want our kids to be happy. We all want them to do work that they enjoy for a salary that allows them to live a good lifestyle. Okay, we may disagree on what a good lifestyle means, and we should disagree because we're different people, but we all want our kids to do work that they enjoy where they're safe and happy and valued for a salary that allows them to live a good life. Hey, we all want them to be safe and healthy. We all want our children to be loved for who they are. So Those are things that we have in common. And when you see a mom making a different choice than you would make, like their child is in 27 different after school activities and weekend activities, (laughs) they're always late to the activity your kid is in because they're coming from some other activity. I want you to notice why the difference in their choice versus your choice triggers you so much. Like, why does it feel so bad? Why are you like judging that mom who's making a different choice than you are? Maybe it's because you're worried that your child is missing out on something. Maybe you're feeling, maybe one of those 27 activities is something that you wish you'd enrolled your child in now that you've heard how great it is. Or, um... Maybe you feel bad because you don't have the finances to put them in all of those activities. Like notice all of your own feelings about that choice and then just reconnect with your own priorities and see if you're still okay with your choice. Like it's okay if you're like if I looked at all that and we my kids were definitely in fewer activities than some of our friends kids. But I really thought that being that busy was stressful. And, um, you know, I didn't want to commit. I wanted to commit our family resources in different ways. So I could notice myself being triggered. Then check in with my own parenting priorities. Keep the focus on myself. Then just connect back to we both want our kids to be happy. Like, I want my child to be happy. I want to use my family's resources wisely. And the other mom that makes a different choice wants the exact same thing for her kids. And when I walk myself through that process, then I can feel a connection to that mom rather than a judgment. And in the same way, we can use those phrases when we are feeling judged. We both want our kids to be happy. We both want our kids to be safe. We both want our kids to be healthy. We both want our kids to be loved. Okay, that's a mantra I want want you to play with using both when you're the one doing the judging and when you're feeling judged. When you are the one feeling threatened and when you're like mama bear and maybe threatening someone else. We both want our kids to be happy. We both want our kids to be safe. We both want our kids to be healthy. We both want our kids to be loved. It's a version of the loving kindness meditation. And I'm hoping that it will help you both feel better about your choices and feel less judgment, maybe accept less judgment from other people about your choices. So You'll feel better about the choices you're making. And then when you feel better, you feel less inclined to judge other people's choices. And when you fall into either being judged or judging someone else, you can use that mantra to help you get back to the connection that all moms share. Because even when you're being judged, it's not really about you. It's about their experience like their worries, their thoughts, their concerns about their own kids, like 
their judgment of you is never even really about you anyway. (laughs) It just feels so terrible because it pushes on our own judgment about ourselves. So that's why those phrases work in either situation is because really it's kind of all part of the same thing. So when we are fighting, when we are judging, when we are seeing other families as other than our families, like in the mommy wars in general, everyone loses because the mommy wars were designed to keep us focused on each other and our differences rather than on our similarities and the power we create when we're all advocating for what we want for our families together. Our power comes from a mom positive society. Like just imagine how good it would feel if we could create a safe space for everyone to just do their best with their own families. Imagine what it would feel like if you truly believed that every mom out there was on your side. She was rooting for you. She was rooting for your kids to do well. She was at a minimum saying like, hey, that's not for me. But if it works for your family, like you go, girl. (laughs) Every mom was trying to understand why you did what you did and said what you said instead of judging you. Every imagine how good it would feel to be like soaking up community of other mothers of support and acknowledgement from each other. Like I said, it's kind of like the body positivity movement where we're trying to be more inclusive and we're requiring manufacturers to be more inclusive and create comfort and safety and beauty for more types of bodies. If we can create a mom positive society, we can require... We can require the same type of inclusivity and support and just all the good things for our families. And it all starts with celebrating and supporting each other. This is something that we can do. We can build from the ground up. And the very building of it, it, like we don't have to wait until the end when it's built. Like if we just start feeling better about our own parenting, we stop making other parents wrong. If we just celebrate, like we all want our kids to be safe. We all want our kids to be happy. We all want our kids to be loved. That is going to feel so good to us, both now when we do it and as we grow and acknowledge the power that we uniquely hold as moms. So I I would love it if you give it a try. If you give that mantra a try, let me know how it works for you. Let me know some situation that you were in that was feeling not so great. And you just said that over and over to yourself and notice the changes and how it felt and how you reacted to the people around you. Um, The kindness that you showed yourself and the kindness you showed other moms. I would love to hear it. So you can shoot me an email at Allie at AllieIrwin.com or you can always join the free Facebook group, the free mom community, mom positive community, no BS mom help on Facebook. Have a wonderful week. Hey. If you enjoyed today's show and you want even more support and a shot of fresh inspiration in your email box each week, you have to get on my list. Sign up to receive my free guide on how to stop second guessing yourself as a mom. There are so many decisions to make as a mom and this guide will help you to make decisions and just move on. No more waking up (laughs) 3 a.m. wondering if you made the wrong decision. This guide is so good. Even my non-mom clients are raving about it. So sign up today and I will see you next week.